Welcome to University Orthopedics On Demand. Uh, my name is Ravi Verma. I'm one of the spine surgeons at UOA. Tonight, I am joined by one of my esteemed colleagues, fellow spine surgeon, Matthew McDonald. And uh, we are gonna talk about a very uh, new topic uh, called minimally invasive sacroiliac joint fusion. So Dr. McDonald, thank you for joining us tonight. And uh, I'm curious, you know, what what is this new procedure? Who may be somebody who may benefit from that? Uh, hi, everybody, and thanks for the introduction, Ravi. Um, so, so the procedure is not exactly all that new, um, but the technique has sort of been refined and been sort of uh, uh, developed into a uh, much easier and uh, performed minimally invasive operation that we can now do to help patients with SI joint pain. So I guess you know, the first question is, what is the SI joint and and why is it causing pain? So, you know, the SI joint is this kind of uniquely shaped joint that is down at the base of our spine and connecting to our pelvis. So I actually have a little model here that I'll pick up to show everybody. So, you know, our lumbar spine comes down and the bottom or the base of our spine is the sacrum. But the sacrum is not only the bottom of the spine, it's the back of the pelvis. And the pelvic bones connect to the sacrum. And there's these kind of long squiggly joints here on either side. That's the frontal view. And then there's a, a, a view from the back here, these joints here, where the pelvic bone meets the sacrum. These are our SI joints or our sacroiliac joints. Um, the sacroiliac joints are a sometimes very hard to recognize, hard to diagnose cause of back pain. You know, most commonly patients come with back pain and it's either a muscular thing or it's a structural problem in the spine. But we've been recognizing that the SI joints are a much more common, more frequent contributor to low back pain than I think has been appreciated in the past. So those joints can uh, be a pain generator if they get uh, uh, injured or damaged from a prior, you know, traumatic injury. Um, they can be a source of pain if they deteriorate or degenerate. Uh, and as spine surgeons, we see them a lot as a source of a pain. Sometimes patients who have a prior spine surgery that requires doing a spinal fusion down at the base of the spine. Sometimes that causes excess pressure to shift to those sacroiliac joints, and that could cause pain to occur in those joints too. Um, so that's what a sacroiliac joint is. <laughs> and um, if we feel as though that the, that the SI joint is deteriorated or damaged or a generator of pain, there might be certain tests that we do to try to help hone in and, and figure that out because imaging of the joint is not always diagnostic. So there's some physical exam tests that we can perform to clue us in as to whether or not the SI joint is a source of pain um, and there are even some injections that are performed, uh, where an injection is given into the sacroiliac joint to see if temporary relief of pain occurs to help us confirm that pain is coming from the, uh, SI joint. So that's a little bit of, I guess, background information on what the SI joint is and, and why it could cause pain. Um, Dr. Verma, do you want to maybe go through with patients what our initial treatment strategies are to, to treat the SI joint. And then maybe after that, we can, you know, go through a little bit more detail about what an SI joint fusion is. And we, we have a couple of pictures here to, to show the audience. Absolutely. So um, to your point, you know, many different patients and different reasons can cause sacroiliac pain and arthritic conditions there. Um, and as a result, there's a lot of different treatment options short of surgery that can be helpful here. It's similar things to what may have been treated before, but there is specific physical therapy or exercises and stretches that can help sacroiliac pain, particularly uh, that's slightly different than just lumbar spine or lower back pain. Um, in addition to physical therapy, sometimes even anti-inflammatories and medications can be helpful as this is an inflammatory process or an inflammation that's happening in those sacroiliac joints. And then finally, you know, as you mentioned, sometimes as a diagnostic measure, but sometimes even as a therapeutic measure, as sacroiliac joint injections can be very helpful at localizing where pain may be coming from, 
and also confirming that the SI joint is the driver of the pain and not something else like the lumbar spine or something else. Um, the, I think one of the things that's important to note is that many different people can have arthritic conditions in the SI joint, similar to what you were mentioning, people who've had prior surgery in their lumbar spine, fusion down to their sacrum can have issues there. Even people who have rheumatoid or inflammatory disease can have issues in their sacroiliac joint. Um, so we're learning more and more. And I think that's where some of the newer focus and the newer techniques that were developed are recognizing that a lot of back pain is being generated from this area that was being misdiagnosed in the past. And these types of procedures can be a little less invasive, um, less of a hit on the body, and can have a quicker recovery, especially because they're focusing on the area that happens to be causing the pain and discomfort. So yeah. to that point, to that point, you know, uh, Dr. McDonald, do you want to show us maybe what this procedure looks like? And maybe we can talk about what the actual procedure uh, entails and then maybe what that recovery may look like for a patient. Right. Yeah. So the first step is if if I'm seeing the patient and I think pain's coming from the SI joint, I thought we'll do some of these physical exam maneuvers in the office to try to confirm if that's the case. We'll get some basic imaging. Um and then um, we will attempt to treat it with therapy first. Therapy is sometimes effective. Um, and then if that's not working, like you mentioned, these injections can be valuable for, for two reasons. One, we were confirming the SI joint is the generator of pain, so it's diagnostic. And you also brought up the point that sometimes the injections work well enough that it kind of takes care of, of, of the problem. But you know, some people, despite going through the injections, going through the therapy, the pain keeps returning, pain keeps coming back. And this minimally invasive SI joint fusion procedure um, is a, a great surgery with really good long-term outcomes that are superior to therapy and injections alone uh, in patients that have long-term SI joint pain. So this right here uh, are some uh, x-ray images on the top row and some sort of cartoon drawings on the bottom row, which are kind of different views of this region where the pelvis meets the sacrum and the sacrum itself. So basically this procedure is a same day surgery. We do it through a small little, maybe two and a half, three centimeter incision, kind of on the outer portion of the side of your hip. And basically what we do is we put these screws or dowels across the iliac bone, across the sacroiliac joint into the sacrum. And what it does is it stops this micro motion and instability that develops between those joints. So if a joint is degenerating or there's too much pressure in the joint, it's motion of that joint that's injured or damaged that's degenerated that causes pain. So by inserting these screws across the joint, we stop motion at the joint and therefore very reliably reduce the pain. So it's a same day surgery. It's generally done under general anesthesia. It's a small little three centimeter incision in the side of the hip area, and it involves insertion of these three screw-like devices across the sacroiliac joint. And the screws themselves immediately basically fix the iliac bone to the sacrum and stop the motion in the immediate short term. And the bone that is generated by putting the screws in and the, and the bone shavings and whatnot will over time allow the body to grow bone across that joint and through those screws to achieve what we call a fusion, which is basically the welding of the two bone together by the body. Uh, and so that's what uh, this uh, procedure looks like on an x-ray. So, so the, the image on the top right is kind of like a frontal view with three screws going across that joint on the right-hand side. The image on the far left is kind of like a side view where you're looking almost down the barrel of those screws where you see the screws kind of going right into the sacrum there. Um, the surgery takes generally less than an hour, probably 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, there is you know, some x-ray involved to make sure the placement of the screws is perfectly positioned. Uh, and then patients will wake up, they'll go to the recovery room for a couple hours, and we make sure the patients are getting up, walking around okay. Sometimes we'll give the patient an assistive device we let them put full weight on the leg right away, but sometimes the patients like to use an assistive device just to kind of protect the leg a little bit while their uh, surgical discomfort is starting to calm down. But we let them go home the same day. 
Um, and the recovery is not a, a drawn out one. You know, I, you know, patients might be out of work for, you know, a couple to a few weeks, depending on what they do for a living. Uh, but it's not sort of a prolonged drawn out recovery. And there's not a lot of cervical site pain because it's a minimally invasive procedure. Uh, so, I mean, thank you for going through that uh, procedure in such detail. And I guess you talked a little bit about what the recovery looks like. And then in your experience, and I guess from the literature standpoint, uh, do patients do fairly well with this? Does it have good outcomes? And uh, does this really resolve a lot of people's discomfort? Yeah, they do. And, and, and you, know, I, you know, I will say, yes, a lot of patients will develop SI joint pain and and a good percentage of patients, it's a transient thing that will get better and, and with maybe therapy or injections. But a lot of patients that are suffering from chronic SI joint pain, there's been a, a lot of, not a lot, but, but, but a good number of prospective randomized studies published in the spinal literature, which shows superior outcomes when we do the SI fusion compared to patients that were treated without surgery, which involves basically physical therapy, medical management, injections. And, you know, we measure outcomes in a few sort of different domains, right? We measure pain scores, we measure patients' functional outcome scores, and we measure patients' quality of life scores. And, and there's a lot of, uh, you know, fun looking graphs to see in the studies that were done on this procedure where you see the pain scores, you know, drop pretty rapidly and then and and that relief of pain is sustained over the duration of the study, whether they follow patients for a year or two years or five years. And a lot of times with with the, the therapy or the injection, you see the pain drop, then pain creeps back over time. So we think that patients that have long term SI joint pain, the long term uh, resolution of that is is accomplished in a superior way by doing this uh, minimal invasive SI joint fusion procedure. So thank you for describing that procedure, Dr. McDonald. And I think it's important to note that this is the manner or method in which we perform these kinds of sacroiliac fusions, which are fusions of the spine and can alter the biomechanics of your spine and your whole column, in addition to its interplay with your hip joints. And it's important to note that sometimes there are other physicians and non-surgeons out there who are offering procedures on the sacroiliac joint that are not shown to be as effective at achieving fusion and may improperly alter the biomechanics of the spine. And then there's not a lot of tools in their toolbox to correct that or fix that. So it's important that these types of surgeries are performed by surgeons. And uh, all of the spine surgeons at University Orthopedic Associates are fellowship trained in spinal surgery and board certified by orthopedic surgery. So, you know, we're very well versed in both this procedure and the mechanics that it alters and, um, and any follow-up that requires after this. So uh, just to wrap up here, um, thank you, Dr. McDonald, again, for your time tonight in discussing this procedure and sacroiliac dysfunction and uh, the treatment options, including a sacroiliac fusion. Uh, I'd like to direct our viewers towards the uoanj.com if they would like to make an appointment with one of our spinal surgeons to discuss minimally invasive spinal fusion and to take care of any of your spinal needs.